Hello and welcome to this episode of Myth Series with me, Kieran Bartlett, and him, Shane Todd. The cat's father, and Shane Todd. Hello. This guy. Uh, today, th- this is a podcast where we try to work out if some stories from the past are hit or myth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so whether it's whether they're true or false, or whether there's a wee bit of truth in it. A wee nugget, a kernel, if you will. Yeah. A morsel, I could do this. A modicum, I could literally do this all day. Anyway, um, a what a shit bit. day that would oh, be. No. <laughs> Listen, a sliver, uh, listening to me coming up with other words for particles. Uh, anyway, so, uh, a slice. So, I'm done. I'll have to stop that. So, today's episode, I'm going to present to you, Shane, the history myth of the myth story of... I'll be the judge of that. ...of uh, Robin Hood. So... This is an I'm I this is as close to Lincoln Green as I could get. What is that? That's the colour he wore. Okay. Apparently. Did he? Was he even real? Anyway, so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna fucking drill into it. That's what we're gonna find out. So it's very hard to drill with these. I, you, see when I was moving house there last week? Yeah. I literally at one point I went to lift this wee basket. It's very small. And I couldn't do it. And at one point, no, no light. At one point, no Vespasian. At one point, I actually Dude, yelled. Dude, you're going to be cursed now. At one point, I literally yelled the phrase, curse these tiny hands. <laughs> <laughs> and Chloe and Kev both heard it. It was great. Anyway, so Robin Hood, a man with normal hands, presumably. Um, he was great, apparently a great archer. We're going to get into all this. We all know, we all know the legend and the, and, and the, the popular culture. What We've do you call the, we it? We saw the movie a, as a kid. A melange. What movie did you see? The well, I saw the Disney one. Right. And then only about two Where's years the fox? ago. Yes. Yeah. And is that that's true though? Yeah, yeah. I'm Encha- sure about that. An he enchanted, was a fox an man. enchanted talking fox. Yes. Yeah. He was, was a man fox. Wasn't who he? was mates with a bear that didn't literally lift him and rip him in his mouth? But anyway, well, he did. I um, deleted scenes. I only saw the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves ones with Kevin Costner about, <laughs> two, Costner about two years ago. <laughs> right here, right. So Smooth. this you only saw that about two years ago. Yeah, I swear to God, I saw that when I was about six. Oh, you're so hard. No, I'm not hard. I'm cultured. I'm brought. <laughs> see in my house. See in my house. We were brought up. It was a big movie watching culture in my house. There was eight kids. Right, I was the youngest. My sisters went well, to cinema yeah. to see this. Yeah, the kids were watching movies. He was annoying your mum and dad for doing <laughs> It was a big fucking culture <laughs> too. <laughs> anyway, I can't even argue against it. Do you know what I mean? Stick, I stick flubber on there. We'll uh, be down in <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> so anyway, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves came out, I think, 91, Sorry. 92, that kind of time. I definitely saw this when I was about six. Right, anyway, the video got brought into our house. I was told I was already a big fan of archery and of Robin Hood. I was a weird wee boy. I I had bow and arrow. Like I was I was in that. Like not not like you know with a point on it. Like but the kids safe ones out of Hector's on a Falls Road. Now what I would say about Rob right. So see Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. This is important. What all could you get out of Hector's on the Falls Road? Anything. You would get you could get toys. You would get great uh gun toys in there that would have made noises and would have had like did you ever get one that had like a wee window on the side that had like a muzzle flash inside the gun? Oh you could I get don't those. Think I ever had one of those. Um you get like uh pots and pans. Things to clean with, like pot scrubbers. You know what you would have got? It's uh, weird that they do weapons and household cleaning. Not real weapons, like yeah. like kids' weapons and then so toy swords and then also like they would have had like a, a wheelie bin full of good deck scrubs out the front, you know, right. a good brush. Anyway, the tea towel shop. Do you keep your deck scrubbed? Oh, my deck is scrubbed. Sorry, this baby anyway. wants us to move on. Right, so what, here's the thing, right? So th- this this is essentially a collection of legends, but we're going to try to work out, was there a real guy? I I wanted, I've, I've accumulated and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Curated. Curated a lot of movie pictures here just to show how popular this is in uh, popular culture in the 20th and 21st centuries, right? One one of the first things committed to film was a Robin Hood story. Like, then, like, as as the century went on, 20th century, there's loads of iterations. 
they all basically tell the same story, but the later ones, the later ones and the latest ones, really go in hard on this crusader angle. He must have been involved in the crusades. So we're going to talk a wee bit about that, about the actual history of that. So let's, let's, let's look at, um, let's look at the, the Disney one down, please, the Disney photo. So this is, this is your class. Oh, that's, that's a different one. That's not the animated one. That's Patrick Wayne. It's John Wayne's son. Actually, that's a lie. That isn't who it is. It's Richard Todd. I'll tell you about him. He's my great grandmate. Richard Todd. Yes. The actor. Yes. Or you, you know this. It's a, this is the first conversation we ever had when we did Pavilion. We were doing stand up together. This is the first conversation we ever had. This is your wee dick. I saw that. Oh, I saw that. I nearly bought that as well. I was going. I don't. The first gig we did was McHugh's, and the first <laughs> conversation we had was you tell me to stop slagging your shoes and that my moment had passed. Anyway, that's a true story. Uh, this is this is the this is what I remember. Right, we remember Robin Hood. He's a crafty fox. Now there's a couple of things happening in this Disney version that happen in all the Robin Hoods. He's a brilliant archer, mm -hmm. right? Who's he up against? The sheriff of Nottingham. The sheriff of who else Lampard. is he up against in this? Do you remember? Is demons. I remember that the dark night of the soul that he has when he's out yeah. on his own out in the forest. Uh, I, ca I can't remember specifically. King John, right? Do you remember this? No. Right. Is so, he fat? No, not in this. Right. The sheriff's fat. Sheriff's like a big fat wolf. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And has a great voice. He's voiced by a brilliant voice actor. Because uh, he sort of has that, like, southern, you know, uh, what in tarnation? One of those sort of voices, anyway. Right. Um, uh, so, yeah, so... He's all, he's a, he's a brilliant archer. Maid Marion is in there. Little John's in there. These are yeah, all yeah. the merry men. You know what I mean? These are all. These are all. Uh, I don't know what just happened there, but these are all. Okay. These are all part of the story, right now. Little John, they said, boys. The Disney one. The Disney one's pretty good, right? Doesn't go into a lot. I remember it being good. Do you remember what one of the central stories is in it? Is it to do with tax? Do you remember this? King John is flat out. Tax fucking the whole country. Yes, right. Well, that that isn't that how the whole the whole idea of this is. This guy steals from the rich and gives to the poor because everyone was being too heavily taxed. Right. They're why struggling. why were they being taxed? Do you know? No. So this really did happen, probably. Well, it did happen. So King John's brother was Richard the Lionheart. He's the actual King of England, right? Dicky Lionheart. And he went away. Yep, big Dick Lionheart. He went away over on the Crusades. To reclaim the Holy Land from the Moors, right? From from Islam, right? Right, we're good. You did a week confused. I'd never heard there. of the Moors before. Right, okay. Well, pe pe the Moors, like that's what that's. It what sounds like a family, like a mom, a dad, S and two sons. S S Moors, <laughs> yeah. the the, going, the the sports like, shop owners. They like just robbing it. Like we need to get the Moors, and it's just a nice wee family. Well, they, that's they they call they call these people the Moors. That essentially uh, Islam, Islam right? right? So they went to reclaim the Holy Land from these people. Uh, I thought you were doing something weird there. Anyway, just getting a cup of tea. I'm very twitchy today. I'm so tired, right? Anyway, and Robin Hood gets me all worked up, right? So, well. If we're playing that game, well, I got a wisdom tooth out yesterday. Did you? Yep. And I'm here. I'm talking, feeling good. I'm in pain. I'm on pain relief. But it's not going to stop me getting to the bottom of this myth, sir. Good. I like that. There's a, there's a, that's a, that's a great like stating what the premise of the show is. I love that. Right. Anyway, so Robin Hood, right? So King John's brother Richard, he goes off on the crusade. King John slides in, takes Where over. Where does he for go? Genuine question. Where does he go? Like literally over to like Jerusalem. Right. Right. So he's over there fighting that. He's captured. He's captured and held by, I believe, Isis. an Austrian king on his way home. Leopold, perhaps? A name like that anyway. Is this right, Dan? I so Leopold's be... just passing through. He's not to do his battle. He sees Richard Lionheart. Richard, Richard is on his way back, I ah, think, and he's okay. captured. Is this correct? Who captured Richard the Lionheart? Am I correct, huh? Dog the Bounty Hunter. I would love it if it was Dog the Bounty so Hunter. So would I. R.I.P. Dog's wife. Anyway, he gets captured. Real shit. And, and he's held for, this is where you get the phrase, a king's ransom. 
like in order to release the king, you must pay. It was Leopold, but on Mate. behalf of Roman German Emperor Henry the Sixth. Right. But he's is Le- Leopold's Austrian, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Something Mate. like that. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. The most I've done for this was look up them film pictures. I am absolutely wringing that clean out of my hope. Now anyway, Leopold. He's he's lifted Richard. I I, I am slightly lying about that in the sense that I did research this for a script I was writing last year, which I'm going to tell you about because I think it's a great idea for a TV show and maybe we'll get some traction on a crowd anyway, crowdfunder. Anyway, it's called Not In Him. Anyway, it's actually told from we'll the perspective. We'll get a crowdfunder. It's told from the perspective of the sheriff. Kerry 2013 <laughs> right, anyway. over here. We'll get so, a Kickstarter going, man. So, <laughs> here, mate. Uh, no, I'm not even. So, right. So I've seen two stories about crowdfunders this week, but they're all grim. Anyway, so one... So so Richard gets Richard gets lifted right. Uh, King's ransom. Can I say we've established this? We know right. He's he's lifted, and the and, Fuck and, off. and they want and they want this ransom, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be serious kabling. So the word gets sent back to John here. Free me. Uh, we need money. We need you to pull money from everywhere. Go through every sofa in England and fucking find. The shackles, the groats that have fallen down the back of the sofa right. go through everywhere, hence the heavy taxes. Now, this is where you get into it. If I, I feel like we're, you know, Robin Hood, the character, sort of starts to appear around this time in in, in ballads. And when in, are we talking about? Uh, like the 13th century, early 13th century. Like the Magna Carta, like late twelfth, early thirteenth. I thought fourteenth through the ballad. Well, see, but the Magna Carta, King John is tw- uh, Magna Carta is twelve fifteen. Yeah, so, but the ballads were written afterwards. Yeah, so maybe. Ball- ballads about the Magna Carta. Historical reposition on Magna there. Carta. Uh, Magna Carta sounds like a class restaurant, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it's 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 it mean it means great card, great great paper. Isn't that what it means? Great. Like a daily sport? Do you know what it was? It was, a, it was a massive census of everything. It was basically so they could go, we need to work out exactly how much wealth. This is a very Norman thing to do, by the way. The Normans. Like some guy Norman, like some guy Norman would. Uh, a, guy called, a guy called, Norman, a guy called would Norman would be in charge of this. I'll now. do the census, thank yeah, you. I will, I'll handle it. My name's Norman. How many children do you have in yeah. your house? Right, yeah. so... Um, so the do you have any dependents? So the no- so just a group ki- of guys. So King Norman. King King Richard and King John are sort of descendants from, like uh, like William the Conqueror. You know, like the, the actual Normans that came over in ten sixty six. So just I, a load. Of, sorry, in ten sixty six, just a load of guys called came Norman over. Came lo- over. An, an entire race of people called Norman came to England, right? And they took over, and uh, and then they started to, like this is where you get like. You know, this is around the time of Carrick Fergus Castle's getting built and all. Right. Like in the 1100s, I think. John de Courcy. Oh, wow. I think he's the guy. Right, anyway. So, anyway. Flash forward. He's... The King's Ransom is required. They're taxing the fuck clean out of people. And this is where this character, Robin Hood, starts popping up as maybe somebody who starts taking one back for the poor. Now, is he really taking one back for the poor? Is he maybe... Taking a wee bit for himself and then going here, fucking Charlotte, and all right. Right. But this is where we need to start deciding on what Robin Hood story we believe. Mm-hmm. Because see the other Disney one, the one with Richard Todd. Interesting fact: I think he was actually born here. He was a famous actor. Do you know he actually? This is this is a brilliant fact. This is brilliant. He took part. He stormed Normandy. The capital? He actually stormed Normandy, ironically, in 1944. He took part in the invasion of France. He Can we was, find out if he's related to me, being serious? I actually looked into this, and I can't work it out. If he's related to I th- me? Yeah, because I think he's literally born here. Born in Dublin in 1919. He could easily be related to you, look. And he looks like me there, doesn't he? Well, we bit. Kieran. I would go... Kieran, as, Kieran. Yeah, handsome bastards, right? He... He took part in the attack on Pegasus Bridge, which was an, a, a massive, important thing. I think to secure, I want to say, one of the beaches, because it, w- it was basically a major bridge to let people, like, let the Allies drive tanks over and stuff. Important part. 
I can't remember what beach it was connected with. I think it might have been gold or sword. Anyway, uh, he he was literally there. And then in the movie, The Longest Day, the big D-Day blockbuster, he played his own commanding officer in that movie. I think that's fucking what? great fact. Anyway, he played Robin Hood. In these sorts of ones, what beach was it? Do was, don't know. Doesn't, Doesn't matter. Uh, anyway. Dan just Googled it and it says, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> Everyone should give a fuck. Part of the greatest generation, this guy, right? Actually, fucking... My granda. Right? Shane, Shane's granda. He, in these ones, seeing these fucking Robin Hood stories, it's all a bit fucking nice and all a bit, you know, I'm a gentleman. Jovial. Right, and this is where we need to start talking about, was he actually a nobleman who, who turned to criminal? And this is the story that you get now in all the Robin Hoods now, is that he was probably a noble who went to fight in the Crusades and then came back and didn't like what was going on and fucking started a war on uh, on the Sheriff of Nottingham who was part of uh, King John's plans in the north to collect the tax. So that's the story. Now, when we start getting into where, where does the history come from, the name Robin Hood Robert, there's a lot of people called Robert Hood in English uh, records from this time because unlike the Dark Ages, the Normans were big on filling in forms. Of course they, of course they were. Forming Normans. I'll do that, right? yep. Uh, they loved it. So they were big into that, mainly as a way of extracting wealth, which is one of the reasons why the Romans documented everything. Can I, can I say, uh, before you talk about that, at this point, and from every portrayal of it, Robin Hood, one of the ultimate HGGs, historical, historical good, good guys. guys. Yeah, so absolutely. what I want you to do is 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 burst that bubble. Let's burst that bubble. Let's burst a couple of bubbles because, and let's maybe keep one or two alive. Right, here's a bubble I absolutely want to keep alive. People go, oh, there's no way he was that good at archery. He fucking could he fire an arrow and split it with another arrow and all that. I believe, yes, he fucking could. And I say this based on a video that I've sent in of a guy called Lars Anderson. Have you heard of this guy? Is he a famous archer? Mate, he, yes. Then no. Right, mate, this guy is unbelievable. I have seen this guy do things with arrows that I couldn't... Mate, I, I couldn't even do this. I couldn't even do what he does with words. I can't even describe what he does. Lars Anderson, mate... This guy, he can he can fire an arrow, he can fire an arrow and then fire another one at it and hit that while it's moving. Right. He can fire arrows around corners. Look at this. Look at this. This is probably Photoshop. This is what this isn't, mate. This guy is legit. But Look at how many subscribers he has. Twenty one million views. Right here we go. This guy is an absolute. So this this warlord. guy is why you believe Robin Hood might have been real. Look at the stuff he can do with arrows. He oh, can hit that's three, fake, mate. That's fake. three people with one arrow. Oh, that's, that's do we right. need to blow it up or something? Uh, just, it won't What's the point of blowing it up? You've got that archer there. <laughs> this guy is that's outrageous. Funny. So he is. That's not real, though. That's it is fake. real. It's a like trickery. It's trickery. It's not real. It is real. I've seen him do shit. Anyway, I've also live? seen him do stuff. Yep. I've seen him live on YouTube. He does stuff where he he has an arrow planted somewhere and he can split that arrow. Right. He's unbelievable. He can hit coins. Right. Someone flicks a coin, he can hit it with an arrow. Right? He's done one he split a hair with an arrow. And I mean like a human hair showed you it. He's done ones where you know people say like so in the famous scene in Prince of Thieves, there's a bit where uh, one of the boys is getting hanged. Uh it's Christian Slater. Uh, and other boys are get all getting hanged, and Robin, Kevy Costner, that's right, fires the arrow a couple yep. of times at the same rope, and people are like, "That's bullshit." This guy does it three times in a row, three different ropes, splits them all. Right, he's unbelievable. How much would you not want to be one of those volunteers, though? It's probably not real. I think it is real. I'm not even having that. It's not real. This guy's a warlord. Look, like, it's a group video editor. No, the the video here, you're not seeing the whole screen. Huh? For whatever reason, the guy is a warrior. Anyway, 
I believe it can happen. I've seen other people do amazing things with archery. He's just one of them. Right, this has turned into an episode about Lars Anderson. Right, no, a guy, no disrespect to him. I do not care about Modern Robin Hood, that's all I'm saying. I don't know if he steals from the rich, <laughs> but uh, he's stole enough of our time. So yeah. that was a great segue. And I never do great segues. Anyway, so... Get back to it. Awesome That's way. a bubble I want to know, but I'd love a go. I always think I'd look fucking brilliant on one. I think um, I was worried about getting one of them wheel out. You know the wee scooters? Mobility scooters? No, not a mobility one. You know the wee, the wee streamlined ones? Yeah. I see what's happening yeah, here. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Sorry, that was actually my fault. I Let's wonder would I out. slow it down. That was the, the main thought. Now, anyway. So, that's a bubble I want to keep alive. A bubble I'm willing to keep alive is there is a possibility that this guy was involved in the Crusades. If he was an archer at that time, there's every chance he was in the army. It, that it, does it, vaguely make me think he probably wasn't very noble, though. He probably wasn't rich to start with. So the Crusades are, they're going over to busy fight Muslims? Yes. Right. So it's a religious war? Yes. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was decreed by the Pope. Like, I mean, you fucking, what do you call it? Issuing a, a papal bull, which is like a, an order of the Pope saying, fucking do what I say. And everybody went. All, all the kings of Europe went on this. Uh, the the a curry favor. Yeah, to cover the, the, the tensions. Curry favor with the Pope. The tensions palpable yeah. after the papal bull. Papal bull. That's good. After That's the papal good. bull. Yeah. It's palpable after the papal bull. Yeah. It's good. It's good. And we're going to fight Abdul. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, so this this is the thing. Curate. What are we using as our sources for Robin Hood at this stage? So I went, I, so... Fuck all of the sounds of That hurts me, Shane. I've, You've texted I've, textbooks? I've looked up, no, I've looked up ballads. I read a couple of textbooks about them. Do you know what I've more, do you know what I more widely read on? Was the Crusades generally? And like on that kind of So can I just time? say, in the first ballads, there was no Robin from the rich given to the poor. There was no Maid Mar- Marion. There was no Tuck. There was no mention of a crusade. And there was no mention that he was an outlaw. It's interesting the thing that he might not be an outlaw because what it was, Sam, was in the in the records about like the name showing up. So Robert Hood and then Robin is like a contraction of Robert. So like Robin Hood, Robert Hood. But the, there's a lot of these people in in the records. Some of them are outlaws and some of them aren't. But it's 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 because people like making making hoods would give you the name Hood. Do you know what I mean? Like if you were a maker of hoods right, and right, everybody right. wore them. So like it would be like, you know, uh, a fucking Miller, you know, is a name that comes from somebody that mills flour. Right, so you'd or be called Cooper, like... somebody that made barrels. So you'd you know? be called Kieran Warhammer. <laughs> I'd probably be called fucking Kerry Podcast. That's what I'd be called. Kerry Coin. Because that's what I'm doing, Shane. I'm making coin. No. You'd be called Kerry Tato Cheese and Onion. Oh, I should be. I actually <laughs> literally should have. What would I be called? <laughs> Shane, we annoying faces, because that's what you make. We, we are hating expressions. Anyway, so um, Shane hurtful quips. Anyway, <gasps> that's what you make. Do I? No, I'm only joking. Oh, right, okay. Anyway, so, so yes, so that's interesting because. The idea that he might not have been an outlaw to begin with, and then this became something that happened later, is is in there. Like, and then the the so there's stuff about like, I think the Maid Marian thing is probably shite. Like, it was and, apparently and, it came from French writers in like the eighteenth nineteenth century. It's, it's probably shite. Like, they seem to be throughout some of this stuff seasoning these stories. Yeah, the I French. I think the French generally will get like a story and go. Do you know what this needs? The ride. You know what I mean? Yes. Do you know what this needs? Sexy seasoning. This needs a wee bit of French gay in here. There's salt being dirt all over it. Oh, that's what they're they? doing. Yeah. Adding in a wee bit of, wee bit of smut. Adding in scenes that my dad would look down going, there's no need for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No need. This is meant to be an action film. There's no need yeah, for yeah. it. Anyway, we're uh, out of the bed here. I know. Anyway. <laughs> Do you know my my dad covered my eyes when we <laughs> oh, went, I didn't know you were going. <laughs> when when we when we went when we went to see when we went to see an enemy at the gates. Yeah. And there's that awkward scene where Jude Law pummels Rachel Weiss. Yeah. Um, Weiss. And it's, it's, yeah, it's a weird scene because uh, it just looks like he's hurting her. Uh, my dad covered covered the, uh, covered the my eyes in the cinema and, and said the phrase, no need for it. Aye. You know what I mean? We're here to <laughs> see, we're here to see people's heads get exploded, not love. Anyway. My dad did that. See, when I looked through, through his fingers, he's having a wank. <laughs> Ha 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 
Uh, and he asked me if I want some popcorn. Enemy in my monks. Anyway, right, so... Friar Talk, I also think, is probably shite and was brought in to, you know, clergify the story. Apparently, Friar Talk was a real, based on a real person, but not but in the not original the story. This thing, yeah. Has Friar Talk got anything to do with talk shops? I don't think so. The yeah, he, original. He, he has a great... Uh, used to run a talk shop? Great uh, chain of chippies down in the Nuri, Dundalk direction, yeah. but I'm... It's his legacy. Yeah. Um, so, so, hold on, right? I think we're, there's loads of things at play here. I know, there's so much going on. With Robin Hood... With Friar Tuck, you say Friar Tuck was a real guy, but might not have had anything to do with the story, yeah. any link to the story. But for anyone who hasn't doesn't know the story, what is Friar Tuck's link to Robin Hood? So in the story, Friar Tuck is a, a friar, like a, a a priest or whatever. Who so at this time they would have brewed one of the ways they so they were, would have been educated. They could read and write. They would brew alcohol. Uh, they would teach people uh, and whatever about. Jesus and all that, so and he's meant to have like saved people from destitution and things like that, and he's supposed to have been friendly with Robin Hood and let Robin Hood hide in the fucking giving him sanctuary, which is like letting him hide in the church grounds and stuff like that. Is not that, that vaguely covers talk? Yeah, and I think he was on one side, and then what's the difference between a friar and a monk? Is a monk in I'm a sure. monastery maybe? Is it, yeah, a friar Robin Hood would have like stolen just, from the monks, but the friar, the friars were sort of on his side. So it was I've like never two. known what the difference between a friar and a monk is. To be fair, you know what I mean. But like maybe, maybe it is. Maybe. I've had monk fish in a friar. Well, being being a Franciscan friar, uh, which is what I think he was, is like you're out teaching and you're. I think friars are out out and about, and monks are in the in yeah. the monastery just going. Ah, ah, ah. That was unbelievably good. That's what they did. We bit a Gregorian chant from Shane. Like, Look back. Do that exact thing again. <laughs> and then do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Harmonious. Monks just kind of waited to get like sacked, to get killed. Yeah, yeah. Vikings fucked up so many monks. Yeah, they're just. And it was always like the monks never seemed to just like just leave. Not, for just, it's the monks hot. were just waiting to get. It's hard. Like, what are you at? <laughs> Just waiting to get fucking beheaded here. <laughs> when you said, <laughs> "Run!" <laughs> <laughs> when you said, "Vikings fucked up so many monks." Oh no! I just go like, no. I, people see them and shit themselves. The Vikings are coming. My monks are wrecked. You know what I mean? Or else just being on the boat for like six months, your monks are going to be stinking anyway. So, um, right. So as for our talk, Maid Marion, her part of the story is supposed to be. She's like a noble maid in some of the stories, especially like the modern ones. Robin Hood knew her before he went away and they were maybe like, you know, that sort of boy-girl thing where it's like he, he left for the Crusades at the point where they were still punching each other in the arm because they didn't know how to show their love, you know. And then when they come back, he knows how to fucking punch her somewhere else. And then um, he doesn't, he doesn't. Anyway, it, it's all that sort of stuff though, like where he comes back, they fall in love. She's meant to be, you know, the most beautiful woman in and around Nottingham and all that and she helps him with uh you're the most beautiful woman in the world Nottingham uh most beautiful woman in this forest yeah. um so and then he's meant to sort of live in Sherwood Forest she lives in a castle or whatever she's meant to be related to King Richard she's meant to be uh like his cousin or something in some of these stories let's go nice they've done that in a couple of movies cousin I think it's Prince of Thieves it's cousin yeah I think um and then uh, who else is there then? So there's the sheriff who is, like I say, he, he's running not in him and he's meant to be vicious and trying to stop Robin. And then there's a guy of Gisborne who's in Prince of Thieves and in some of the... St- he's in from the start. Yeah, and he's like a guy, I think in the old legend, doesn't Robin sort of meet him on the road, like a highwayman type situation and they get into an actual... Roadman? Like a tussle. In, in Prince of Thieves, he's related to the sheriff. And the sheriff kills him and all that, right? Uh, who else? Little John then is meant to be the yeah, yeah. the the head of the Merry Men, and then uh, the Merry Men are like Will Scarlet. much Will Scarlet, uh, somebody. See what Miller. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a reference to Lil Little John. John. Yeah, I got it. I got it that time. I didn't. <sighs> I didn't the first time. God. I got it there. I enjoyed it that time. I smiled. I just didn't gush. I know you prefer a gush. 
And I go, oh, shit. Anyway, so... Sorry. Um, so those are the sort of... Uh, the people that are meant to have existed and they're meant to have done, like, you know, great things to, like, steal money and then release it to the poor and all. Like what? Like, ambush the sheriff's men. Like, the sheriff's moving money from Nottingham down to, like... It was London, Darby. even where they where was King John based? I don't think London was the capital at this York, time. York, maybe? York, maybe. Is that not north? Yeah. I don't think it matters. Anyway, you know they're supposed to be transporting money, right? And then like Robin and his boys would steal it, um, because money's all physical at this time. You're not just hacking into the old Bitcoin. Accounts. No PayPal. No PayPal. It's a cash heavy society. Yeah. Um, and this was all to pay for King Richard, and people are meant to have hated King John because of this and all. That's also possibly shite. The you know the but the 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 poorest people are meant to have hated King John, but everybody else thought he was fucking baller because they were all getting rich off him. So he's sort of like a Trump figure, right? You know what I mean? He's just coming and grabbing that, grabbing that economy, whether you know what's like. So Robin um, Hood's not a great guy. <laughs> have you said that? It's good. Yeah, it's good. I can't do it. I'm. I'm. T- I think. I'm Friar re- talk. Wow, this guy's real busy work. <laughs> real low life. I think uh, maybe. Does that mean me and Marion would actually be somebody that Trump paid loads of money because he didn't book her anyway? Uh, all lies. All lies. Anyway, so see, Dan, if you bring up the um, the the see Edgerton the Edgerton photo. So this this is the latest Hollywood blockbuster. Yep. This treats Prince of Thieves like a historical document. Like this this is literally Robin Hood Prince of Thieves 2.0. Have you seen it? Yes. Jimmy Dornan's in it? I read the script of this really early because uh someone sent me it being like, You should read this as a recently sort of written script of a client of mine. And I read it and was like, I hate this. This is, this treats Prince of Thieves. So in Prince of Thieves, it's Kevin Costner. He's noble. He comes back. His house has been burnt out. He decides to go on the run and start fucking with the sheriff and, and getting money and then redistributing it to the merry men and all the people around not in him and all, right? Mm-hmm. And he has uh, Morgan Freeman as his friend that he has brought back with him from the Crusades. Yeah. Uh, and all that, and he falls in love with me and Marion, and it's all great. This treats that exactly like it's a fucking historic document, and it's the same shit. Even though it's all just made up, it's all just made up. Why are the characters on the right in modern clothes, and Robin Hood still rocking the old school? I ha- I hated this. I hated the look of this film. No, really. Why? What? What? How is that experience? Because it's bad design. I hated it. Bad costume design. Then see if you bring up the 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 Russell Crowe one, please, Dan. Now this. Historically speaking, gets into the vibe a bit more. This is Ridley Scott. This is Russell Crowe, Ridley Scott. A wee bit more. People give him shit for his accent. This I didn't mind it. Um, this this goes for that he's called Robin Longstride, yeah. and that it's like he he was uh, an archer in the army, and a wee bit more like you know realistic or whatever. But then this. It, this goes into real mucky. Like brutal movie territory with Kate Blanchett as Maid Marion and Max von Sydow as like her old da, and there's this awful bit. Father in law. Father in law. What's he called in it? Walter. Uh, this awful bit in it. Walter. Where she literally goes, she does something, and goes, "This is for you, Walter." And I was like, "I'm out. I am out. I'm. I'm willing to take." He also just else. gives his daughter in law to Robin Hood. Yeah. At one point, just like, yeah, go on then. She doesn't have agency in the story, Shane. And if there's one thing I hate, it's a woman without agency. No. I I didn't love this film, but it was better than that Taron Edgerton shit. Now, what I would say is that what reason why I'm talking about the movies of this is this is all in people's minds. So trying to drill down into what actually happened is really difficult because there are a few people that I've looked up. So there was a guy around York who some people think must have been Robin Hood. Some and people then, in Yorkshire claim that he was... And then there's a guy in Leicester that uh, people say that he was uh, a sympathizer with Simon de Montfort, who was this guy, was like the whatever, the Earl of Leicester or something like that, who was like, um, and that Robin Hood, the guy, 
was heavily involved in this war between different land barons right. at the time, which they sort of touch on in Prince of Thieves a wee bit and in the Tyrant Edgert one. But like, this is sort of like, it's really difficult because there's people all over England that go, oh yeah, he was the real Robin Hood. And then they just have this wee statue of a wee dude in Nottingham. It's just very weird. So like it was like apparently in the fifteenth, sixteenth century that Scottish writers started writing about him and made him a nobleman, so gave him that background, mm. which then led on to all this kind of Right, right. Which I just don't buy. And the reason why I don't buy it is archery was a poor man's job in the army, like. So sorry, is there two schools of thought and there's more than two, but is there two schools of thought of like he could have been this like dirt poor guy? Uh, you know, yeah. lowest class sort of thing, or he could have been like a nobleman yeah. who was on the side fighting for the poor. A nobleman who who was ignoble and had to become poor in order to find his nobility, Shane. That's the redemptive story of Robin Hood. I didn't understand any of it. Well, like a nobleman who was like a spoiled wee prick Cheers. who had to become poor and an outlaw in order to find his true nobility. Right. Uh, nobility, Now, sure. that fits. So here's a couple of things from this time-ish that kind of are, are, are important to look at. Archery, probably a poor man's part of the army. You didn't, you could because if you were a knight, you had to pay for the upkeep of your horses, you had to pay for your armour, you had to pay for your gear, so it wasn't being handed to you. So you had to be usually rich to be in the kind of cavalry. Right. Well, definitely rich to be in the cavalry. Uh, rich, richer to be in the infantry, probably, as well, because you still had all that gear to pay for. And then it's probably a poor man's fucking way of fighting. But also, that's, like... That's weird. So the cavalry and stuff, they're, like, a top... Say they're, like, the top, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like playing for Man United, but you have to buy your own shin pads. You have to bring your own boots. This is pre-sponsorship, though. Do you know right, what I mean? Right, you bring shorts and socks. All but then, the gear. But then you get sponsored in other ways. You're paying for the horse. If you win the fight, maybe you get a wee fucking track of land somewhere. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? You. But not if you're in the fucking... Not if you're in the infantry. Not if you're in the fucking cannon fodder. Like, right. Even though there's no cannons. Anyway. um, So, that's important. Another thing that's kind of important is that kind of redemptive story. And about nobility, there's a Chaucer poem. I'm about to wreck your life here. There's a Chaucer poem called Gentilesse, which is about gentility and being noble and how true nobility isn't found in in your your mitre, your crook, or your diadem, which is like if you're a bishop, a pope, or a king, it doesn't mean you're noble. You could be a real piece of shit. And the true nobility comes from in here now. Is that not a good story for everybody? I like it, yeah. So I think that all sort of fits in with the time. So this story and somebody doing this kind of thing could have happened and maybe outlaws were... I mean, outlaws are loved now. Like, I mean, I, I, you know, controversial. Jeffrey Epstein. Controversial. When the Northern Bank robbery happened, a lot of people thought before all the consequences and all the people being, you know, hurt or whatever was known, everybody was like, this is great. Or, like, if people, if there's a story where people can do, like, a robbery and get away with it, the Hatton Garden raid, everybody loves it. Like, Or even go, like, Jesse James and Billy the Kid, those types of heroes. Yeah, like, in people the West. like that, like, charismatic stories, charismatic characters of, like, people who are really skilled at something. So he is kind of like a Western, you know, he's like, he's, he's like the, the Billy the Kid of his time. Story. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like, an amazing archer, poor as fuck, taking one for the team, taking one back for the poor people. So that's kind of the story, but then. The history of it, I go, I can see how it fits into the Crusades and into sort of like that Middle English, that sort of... But that could be done retrospectively. But, yeah, but I mean, you really are talking about any time between like the 1180s and like 1320s probably. So apparently the split in the arrow and stealing from the rich to give to the poor was sort of taken from Walter Scott's Ivanhoe. Interesting. So it wasn't even that the original interesting. idea. That is interesting. I didn't know that. It's up and carried off in that. Yeah, it actually literally is. Yeah, no. Powerful gravy. Yeah. I happen to know. Um, you so, so what's your thoughts on this then? Do you think this is... Do you think he really existed? I One mean, man, like... It's, it's, it's a story that you like to think is real. Yeah. And throughout history, there is obviously going to be figures that are 
helping the poor, whether they are poor themselves or they're in a more elevated position mm -hmm. and they're helping the poor. I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility that a guy was at war with the sheriff of Nottingham, mm. especially if the taxes thing's true, then that would make sense. The tax are going to be higher. That's going to hurt people. So there would have been people in that time going against that. Yeah. One specific guy, probably not. It's more likely to be a collective of people. Um, but the fact that, you know, it's this one daredevil guy and he's doing this and he's doing that just sounds too much like a legend. But I like the th it gives it gives you hope in a way. It's a great tale of this person who's like fighting for the poor against tyranny. Do you think if you saw Robin Hood firing arrows around a corner, you would be sitting there going, that's trickery? i say that's Photoshop. No, I would... Uh, I don't know. I, I, it's a fact that there's so little times in stories like this where they just agree on oh, that's where he was from the fact that all these different cities and towns mm. are like he's from here he's from here it all gets mulled but I, I like to think and I think there's it's sort of like the Paddy McDonald you know is it Davis is it Grant <laughs> you know is it Lagmore exactly the same I think there is a, a truth in it and I yeah. think out of everything we've covered I think this could be the closest to the truth. It's obviously going to get exaggerated. You think this is closer to the truth than, like, Julius Caesar? No, 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 no. Sorry, I just mean the ones where I guess we've recorded today. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be, there'll be shit in that that's exaggerated. Yeah, definitely. You no, know? definitely. Like, here, here's the thing. Can I tell you two minutes? Two minutes about... about the Emperor I, might not like... You can about, tell about, it, but... About my show... Not in. Can I tell you what my idea is? Yeah, pitch it to right, okay. okay, can I be a producer? Yep. Can I be, uh, what was, uh, the episode might not have come out. No, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, be a, I'll be Steven Soderbergh. Okay. Uh, Who are you? I'm Dr. Kieran Bartlett, Stephen. Okay. Uh, Why are you in my house? Writer, comedian. I snuck in through the cat door. Anyway, so, took me four hours <laughs> and your doors were ruined. Anyway, um... I uh, <laughs> you're sitting in a chair wearing a door. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nottingham, Nottingham is Pitch it. the Robin Hood story told. We've, we've heard it all before. I'm just saying what he might say. We've heard told it all before. from the perspective of the sheriff of Nottingham. This is Robin Hood, like you've never seen it before. Hmm. Okay. I'm Tell interested. me more. So this I is where that. this is where I you'll this is where you'll lose interest. I really I, have. My my my, fir my first episode, the pilot starts later than Robin Hood, at the siege of Carcassonne in France, right? And during my siege, there is a woman making a tapestry of the true story of the sheriff of Nottingham, and during the siege, people get in and that tapestry is destroyed, so nobody will ever know the true story of what happened here, right? And then we cut back, and the sheriff. Is a fucking he's a he's a hard working uh what's the word like he's a he's a he's like a diplomat right he's hard working politician sort of guy uh he's dealing with a lot of shit and then he gets handed with uh, King John telling him we need you see I see what you're doing you see King Richard being captured in Europe on the way back from the Crusades you then see King John telling the Sheriff of Nottingham you have to fucking tax the Christ out of people. And then you see Robin Hood being a wee dick, and he um, he's plotting against the sheriff. But he's he's really got in the first episode they do a job where uh, they steal a load of money, and Robin Hood is all for keeping it for them for himself. And then he realizes that people are about to rip his head off and turn him in, and that's why he turns some money over to them. So it's a great fucking story. Please Sorry, respect one me. sec. So, what you think that'll be a TV series? Yeah, that's the pilot. I've already written half of it. Okay. Was there a tapestry at the start of Prince of Thieves? Uh you see the Bayou tapestry oh. as the as the, in the opening credits. Do, 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 you know that had to be re-edited because huh? that had to be re-edited because Alan Rickman was too prominent and stole the show in the original edit. Oh wow. Here. This way. Wow. 
what's happening here? Is this Lil John? <laughs> well, here. Before Sorry, just before man. before we go, I did I did neglect to mention, and maybe this is worth potentially getting a picture of. There was a version called Robin and the Marion in I think late sixties, early seventies. Must have been seventies. This was in Connery's post Bond, pre Red October, a, a dark age, if you will, in his uh, career, uh, where he played Robin Hood. And uh, oh, 1976, this is right in the middle of the shit. And Audrey Hepburn played um, Maid Marion. Look at this. Connery looks like Joe Lindsay. Uh, <laughs> um, this is unbelievable. Uh, I've watched this movie. It's fucking... Is your head shaking? What? I thought your head was All right, sorry. I know sometimes you just get that shaky feeling when you see that. Um... This movie is like one of those films that's just brutally, like, brutally realistic and put together just so hard that it's just hard to watch. Do you know what I mean? Right. You see people walking through real mud. It just looks like it would have been a fucking nightmare to film it. I think, uh, isn't Robert Shaw in this? I think he plays the sheriff. You know, the the bad guy out of, out of Jaws? You know? Well, not bad guy, but the guy, the, the old <laughs> so salt. I think the shark's the bad guy. I know, guy, yeah. The, the old salt that the shark rips in half. He plays the shark. Is he? Fucking right. Robert Shaw, yeah, he is, yeah. And Harris, oh, Richard Harris. There's a king. Apparently the story of that film is pretty close to the story of how they reckon he, or the legend of how he died. Oh, really? Oh, was this the... He was betrayed the, by his cousin or something and poisoned. Or, and and then the, is this the thing with the fire the arrow at the window he, to he the side where he's to be buried? Dangerous way of picking a plot. You know what I mean? Could you imagine if you had to do that now? Imagine imagine going out towards Lisbon, out to Blurris, just firing an yeah. arrow up. There's a fucking motorway there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? What if that arrow comes down and hits somebody's wee fucking Kieran on the hard shoulder? Yeah. Nightmare. And that's and that's the that's the story of Robin Hood. A man who puts your life at risk to pick his plot. There you go. Um, origi- I, I, original socialist, communist. I don't really, I don't buy it. Spreading I, I, the wealth, mate. Remember I, the Robin Hood tax people I, tried to introduce about 20 years ago? What was that? It was a, it was a big, big campaign and there was like well-known, I want to say like British per, TV personalities, actors in it. And there was, uh, unless I'm wrong, I remember this being in cinemas. There was a right. big campaign and it was like a 1%. Sort of like the, the Juan Mata, what's that called? Global is that not the one percent? Is that not what he calls his? Right. No, is it? I don't know. It was or something. It was something like that. It was they were trying to introduce me government to introduce a thing called the Robin Hood tax. Interesting. Uh, and then instead they just introduced twenty years of austerity and cuts. But anyway, shameless cuts. That's what they are. So, I think. Um, I think this is probably, like I mean, it's 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 mostly myth, more than hit. Yeah. But do I think it's plausible that there might have been a couple of folk heroes created out of the King uh, Richard and King John situation? Absolutely. But whether it was a noble archer who was dandering around with uh, Audrey Hepburn in the twilight of her career, I probably disagree. So I'm going to say myth. What are you saying? You're saying myth? I mean, for the whole story in general, I've got to say myth. But... I'm swaying way more towards this being hit. Yeah, so a bullshit in it, but at the root of it, I think it's more hit than myth. Here's something that's important. You can't spell bullshit without hit. Historical high five? Historical high five. Soy boy for that one? Yeah, give me a wee pat. Thanks. Give me a wee pat. Well, that's all I've got Hey, on Robin Hood. Don't say it like that. You've you've given a lot. Have I given a lot? Have I given yeah. enough? Can I find out Dan why one of the most recent Google searches was Maddie Healy and Taylor Swift? Either why were you? Oh, they've Googling broken up. They've broken up, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. They they've broken up. Yeah. Like th- those tickets. Did you hear the story about somebody selling, trying to sell contact lenses? This is true. There was somebody trying to sell contact lenses that they wore to see Taylor Swift. For ten grand, that's right. That is a true story. The eye, yeah, they'd seen Here, through it. I'll say this: see if that's true. Robin Hood can be true, mate. Yes, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe maybe he just bought contact lenses as somebody that went to the Crusades. Yeah. And then, and then, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucking mental. Oh, I'm fuck. saying myth. There we go. It's devastated me that they've broken up. So, I'm saying myth on that. That can't be true. Please, God. Yeah. Uh, he's weird, though, isn't he? He snogs people in Cardinal. No, he's not weird. He's one of the greatest musicians of all time. He snogs people in the crowd, which I think is... He rubs raw meat over himself. It's, it, do you know what it's all... It gets everyone talking. It's got us talking right now. About I know, yeah. It. We're giving him a platform. I don't want to give him a platform. You already have. Ever close me on chocolate. Petticoat. That's all I know. Anyway. We're going to see Do you know what was a good song that had Petticoat in it? That Cook's one. You're pretty, pretty, pretty coat. Join us for our next episode where we talk about some of the best petticoat lyric references <laughs> of all time. And whether or not they were hit or myth. Let's, uh, this episode, Kieran, really hit the target. Like Hunter from Gladiators. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed that a lot. It, I, I, apart from the films, I didn't know that much about it. Mm. But, uh, but I enjoyed that. Good. Thank you. And I like that we don't always say the same thing. I'm thinking more hit. You're thinking more myth. Yeah, I like that too. That's Maybe the audience likes that too. That's what makes us friends. How can we be lovers if we can't be friends? <laughs> <laughs>